behold. Fuck. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. It has arrived. Hello, neighbor. I hate the trackpad, I hate the keyboard, I hate the fucking touch bar, I hate the stupid ass dongle crap. Can't even fucking, it make, drives me crazy when I'm sitting there at night and I'm looking, I have to look up like this, and how does this work again? One, two, three. Never easy saying goodbye to things that you once loved. This is the uh, 16 inch MacBook Pro, 2.3 gigahertz, eight core Intel, or i9, okay? i9 16 gigs of ram in here here's the deal i've bought and returned this same computer twice when they released the latest macbook pro in 2016 with the sexy space gray i was very excited at the time i had a macbook pro from 2012 that i had been cutting feature films on and just tapping out i pushed that thing to the limit literally the battery was like bulging out of the enclosure it was uh it was uh, it was sketch so i went and pulled the trigger on the latest macbook pro and needless to say i was underwhelmed i was well aware that the dongle situation would would be an issue who wants to deal with plugging it the the fucking dongle in. Who wants to do this? I hated its performance. I felt like it underperformed compared to my 2012 MacBook. I returned that and went back to my old MacBook. <sighs> you would think by this point that Apple would have released a dongleless version or some alternative that would be catered to creators and filmmakers and photographers and people who need things like USB 3 and need things like HDMI and need SD cards. Not to mention, if you're a writer, I like to write, this keyboard was shit, and it still is shit. At the end of last year, they released the 16-inch MacBook Pro. I still love the space gray. I love the way it looks. And they even upgraded the keyboard, which is a small improvement. Alas, I pulled the trigger again. There's, there's always a final straw, right? I found it to crash quite a bit. Recently, when I was working on a project that was time sensitive, I would open up Premiere, the fan would get really, really loud, and it would just shut right off. There's nothing new or exciting about the latest MacBook Pros. I feel like they're stalemated. This is dead in the water to me. The thought of moving to a Windows computer, it is the only thing that really gets me excited right now. I mean, that's the choice you have to make. I then embarked on a perilous journey to discover the all-in-one system that was right for me. I no longer want the limited experience of a keyboard and a screen that I can't touch. I want a touch screen. I want the Apple Pencil. I want to take notes. I have notebooks that are just piling, piling, piling up. So what started with looking at the emerging e-ink tablets, such as the Remarkable 2, then brought me to the iPad Pro, which is so close and yet so far from what I need. Not being able to read from external hard drives and the lack of integration for video editors from our familiar workflow is a no-go. Now the Asus ZenBook Duo was very tempting. Dual screens, brilliant. Apple, please take notes. But still not right for me. And then this happened. The Microsoft Surface Book 3. I'd heard about the Surface Book, and specs-wise, this looks really exciting. I called Best Buy. Like, I, I, I honestly don't care about returning it back to you. It's just that the computer won't let me. <laughs> and after some outlandish shenanigans, they were finally able to issue me store credit. Just need everything back in the original packaging and factory reset. That's the, the gist of it, yeah. I'm gonna go return this fucking computer for the second time. Apple. Why? <laughs> Upon receiving my Surface Book 3, I was immediately struck by the design of the packaging and the simplicity. That's a big 15 inches of tablet. Let's open this up. Look at that's big. This, people have said it's top heavy. I can see it being a little top heavy. See, it's got that a little wobble to it. This is going to be a really important thing. Like I said, I write. I don't like the keyboard on the MacBook Pros. The computer's not even turned on. I really like the keyboard. That feels great. Naturally, there was a lot of ooh and ah involved. It was all very new to me. Surface pen. Feels great. I like the way it feels. What do I do? How does it turn on? How does it... Oh, hear it? I'm like making contact, and that is so important. I mean, this is what we're missing from... 
MacBook Pro. We're missing these USB ports. I hate dongles. On top of that, I got an SD card reader, which is like, I mean, what, did we miss the mark? What happened? How do I turn it on? Escape? Delete? Power? Hello? The pen. Wait a minute. Oh, I can feel it. Oh! Oh, and I mean, touchscreen, guys. Oh, I feel great. I'm Cortana. A little sign in here, a touch of Wi-Fi there. Mission accomplished. Login. What is Microsoft? What is the Outlook? This is really light. I like the way this feels. This is big. This is big. This is some futuristic shit right here. Uh, I don't even know. I am having fun. I am having fun. This is so fun! The Surface Book 3 that I purchased is the 15-inch Intel Core i7 with 32 gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabytes of SSD storage, and the NVIDIA GTX G4 1660 Ti Max. 1660, guys. There really is no better time than now to have purchased this computer. The day that I received it, Adobe Premiere released their latest update, which is heavily focused on the NVIDIA encoder so that it maximizes render times and exports are gonna be significantly faster. And so far from what I've seen, comparatively putting it against my iMac, not only is playback really impressive, but the actual export times are significantly faster. You should see this. I have a really large fat cut where I just assemble all the best pieces of media. This was a nine hour fat cut. With many camera formats, resolutions, and frame rates. The playback on that Surface Book 3 is immediate. Like, I was going through the fat cut and I would just click on anything, press play, and it was just playing immediately. Mind you, without using proxy files. Now let's export some shit. This isn't the ideal example, but I think we can all relate. I have an hour-long 720p zoom call that I exported on both machines. H.265, 20 megabits per second at maximum resolution. With the iMac exporting in around 15 minutes and the Surface Book exporting in under four minutes. I then proceeded to finish this video on the Surface Book. <laughs> Obviously my biggest concerns were this transition from Apple to Windows. Sure there have been some integration things along the way, but I've kind of merged my Surface Book 3 into what feels like my MacBook in a way. Also, AirDrop. I was really concerned about AirDrop, but guess what? SnapDrop is a thing. You can have it on the desktop of your computer and you can send items just like AirDrop, just by drag and drop from your Mac, iPhone to your Windows computer. But as far as like cons go, Thunderbolt 3, would it have been nice? Yes. Would another USB-C been nice? Yes. Could the placement of the headphone jack be improved? Absolutely. Right now, there aren't many cons. You know, I have had a really fun time uh, working with this computer. I am not done with Apple. I'm sure that Apple is going to release something great by the end of the year. And if that's the case, then I might go back. But I can't just stick around with something because the world says it's great. It's gotta work for me. So we really need to ask ourselves, what do I need? And if it seems like something that doesn't exist in the world, there's a good chance that it's right around the corner and you're not even aware of it. That is, if you're willing to sacrifice brand loyalty. This is great. I love this. This is so fun. <laughs> ah. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe. Take care, neighbor.